Over the holidays, I have no doubt a ton of people got Pixel devices either brand new with the Pixel 8 lineup or maybe an older, cheaper model in the Pixel 6 or 7 series. But whether you're a seasoned vet or a beginner to the Pixel world, there's always something new to learn that will help you get the most out of your device, and this video should help you maximize your experience with a handful of tips that most users should at least know about to some degree. To be clear, we've tested these features on everything from the Pixel 6a to the Pixel 8 Pro and confirm they do work, so hopefully this video helps as many Pixel users as possible. Getting right into it, I wanted to start this video off with some customization tips first since most people will be able to get some long-term, easy value here. If you haven't been up to speed with the new Android updates, Google has been slowly adding new customization options like lock screen clock faces, for example, where you have nine different clocks to choose from alongside multiple color patterns, size options, and always on display modes that can be accessed via the wallpapers and style section in the settings. Taking a look, you also also have a few more customization pieces like lock screen shortcuts that give you quick access to a handful of commands including flashlight, do not disturb, google wallet, etc. And there's also an option to add text on the lock screen if you want to add a custom message of some kind. On top of that, there's also been a few customization features added in terms of wallpapers like the cinematic wallpaper option that adds a 3D motion effect during use and when unlocking the display. Or if you want to get a bit more creative, Google has implemented an emoji workshop wallpaper feature that allows users to make their own personalized wallpapers by combining a series of emojis, patterns, and colors to make for a very pixely looking design that also works really well with the Material U color theming. As a side note, the wallpaper engine does have a randomized option for those who don't want to invest too much time in the design phase, and it also reacts to touch input, which is pretty fun to play around with. The last and probably most forgotten customization feature you should know about though is in regards to Gboard theming. Technically this isn't a Pixel exclusive, but I still felt it was worth bringing up. You can change the theme of your keyboard by opening it up and hitting the painting palette icon. From there you have a few presets to choose from with different color combinations, landscapes, and gradients, as well as the option to make your own theme with a custom photo or remove the keyboarders if you prefer. Next up are some small but powerful tips for the camera and again this is meant to cover the widest variety of Pixel users. First, I have to talk about the astrophotography mode for Pixel devices because the results are quite impressive, and believe it or not, I had a really hard time figuring out how it worked for quite a while. It turns out, in order to get this feature working, you basically need a tripod or an object to prop the phone up against for maximum stability. Once it's stable, you'll be able to see the UI change to let you know astrophotography mode has been automatically enabled. From there, hit the shutter button, and in about four to five minutes, you'll end up with a beautiful beautiful nighttime shot. Personally, I don't think Google markets this feature well enough, so if you have some time, go out and try to get some awesome starry nighttime photos. Another underrated feature people should be using more often is the built-in stabilization feature inside Google Photos. Yes, yes, technically this isn't a Pixel exclusive, but since Google Photos is the default gallery, I figured it was worth talking about. To activate it, pull up the video that you recorded on your device, start an edit, and hit that little crooked frame icon. From there, Google Photos will start stabilizing the video. Honestly, I find the results to be a bit hit or miss depending on the footage. However, if you're missing out on the stabilization feature included on the Pixel 8 Pro with the Video Boost, then this is a solid alternative for the time being. Something cool I just found out while researching this video is that you can remap the volume keys inside the viewfinder. By default, the volume keys act as a shutter button, but by digging into the shortcuts portion of the camera settings, you can rebind the keys to adjust volume control controls, disable them completely, or use them to zoom in and out instead of having to use the pinch to zoom gesture. In practice, I thought this was pretty helpful as I can keep the camera stabilized while using that digital zoom, and if you have a pro model device with a capable telephoto lens, you should be able to get even more usage from there. Last is a little trick for those with older devices. I find using your 2x digital zoom can do a pretty decent job mimicking the macro mode included on the Pixel 8 Pro. In my eyes, this is really 
free for those who want to maximize their current device, but all you have to do is get as close as possible to your subject. And once in focus, use that 2x zoom. Thankfully, it uses the primary lens, which is typically more powerful, and while not a perfect macro shot with the fisheye look and the wider field of view, it can still get the job done, especially if you want to get the most out of your current device's camera. Now, I understand not everyone bought a Pixel phone brand new, but if you did, you most likely used the OTG dongle included in the box to transfer your data and probably never used it again. Well, tip number three is please, please find a use for that dongle, guys. You got it for free and you might as well benefit somehow. A lot of people forget this is effectively a USB-C to USB-A adapter, which opens up a huge world of possibilities for peripherals like a mouse, keyboard, flash drive, or even something a little more niche like a high-end microphone if you're a content creator or a controller if you're a hardcore gamer. For those that really want to take things a step further and you have some extra cash, I would encourage you to take a look for some cheap USB hubs, which can enable you to plug in more items than one. So if you're a Pixel Fold user like me, for example, maybe you want to plug in a mouse and keyboard for a desktop-like experience, which is a whole video on its own, by the way. But this is just one of the many things I enjoy about Android in general. Last but certainly not least, I want to dedicate this final section of tips to some Pixel classics. And yes, the hardcore Pixel users may and should know about these already, but I'm 99% sure there are quite a few people who don't. Let's start with the quick tap feature that's buried within the gestures tab of the settings app. With this feature enabled, you'll be able to do a quick double tap on the back of the phone to trigger a gesture of your choosing. You can pick from a handful of options, including the ability to take a screenshot, access Google Assistant, play or pause media, toggle the flashlight, which is my personal favorite, or you can open any app of your choosing. Overall, just a nice quick access feature. If you're like me and watch a ton of spoken content in other languages, then Pixel's live translation feature is going to be a huge benefit to your daily usage. Introduced back on the Pixel 6, you can turn on live caption from the sound and vibration setting page or just by hitting the volume control and tapping on the live caption option. Once enabled, turn on a video in a language other than your own and the device should automatically detect what's being spoken and translate it accordingly. Some language require you to download an add-on to make sure all the functions work correctly, but once installed, the captions window should automatically appear with the translations happening happening in real time. In my usage, it's definitely not perfect, and sometimes it can be a few moments behind. However, if you're okay with getting a general idea of the conversation, this is perfect and built right into the OS. There are a few more features new and existing users alike should at least be aware of, such as the new webcam feature introduced in the December Pixel feature drop, which allows you to use your Pixel device as a camera for video calls on your PC, Mac, or Chromebook. You can find this in the USB preferences section, and once enabled, you can use that camera for everything from Google Meet calls to Discord, and if you have a Mac, you can even use your Pixel camera for FaceTime calls, ironically. <laughs> Lastly, I wanted to mention a Pixel staple that everyone should know about, which is now playing. I know this is a well-recognized feature, but again, if you're new to Pixel devices, it may have slipped under the radar. In the More Lock Screen Options portion of the Settings app, you can enable Now Playing, and then your phone will be able to identify songs in the background while you go about your daily life. Initially, you will see feedback on your lock screen when the device is identifying a song, and it will show the whole song name once recognized. If this is something you're really interested in, don't forget there's a widget that you can add to your home screen under Android System Intelligence that will enable you to see your entire song history for the day if you want to review or share that later on. And all right, guys, I know that was a lot, but those are all the tips I have for the widest variety of Pixel owners out there. I really wanted to make a tips guide that covered a wide range of devices, and to me, these were the most important features that stood out. If you learned something new in this video, leave a comment and share which tip surprised you the most, and if we're getting good feedback, I might consider doing one of these for the Pixel 8 series as well, so let me know if that's something that you're interested in. Either way, guys, I'm getting out of here so I can get started on the next project. This has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.